this video, I'm just going to talk about some differences between DNA and RNA, both nucleic acids. That's what the N and the A stand for. But there's some important differences that we'll see uh, that are relevant to the processes of transcription and translation, which we'll get into in the next videos. So we're just going to talk about how there are differences in the sugars that make up the backbone of the nucleic acids. There's one nitrogen base they have that is different from each other, and there are different numbers of strands as well. So kind of a quick uh, review, uh, the backbone, uh, the sugar phosphate backbone has a different sugar in DNA versus RNA. And the sugar is what actually gives the name of the, the acronym. So D of DNA actually stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid, whereas RNA is a ribose sugar. So it's a ribose nucleic acid. Um, you can see that there's just kind of a small difference that the, the ribose sugar has an extra oxygen in it. And since it's sort of missing the oxygen in the other sugar of DNA, uh, we call it deoxyribose. Um, that actually makes DNA a little bit more stable in the long term, and that's going to make RNAs kind of good for more kind of short-term jobs. Um, but otherwise, we're not going to pay too much attention to that difference. We will see this difference quite a bit. So here's a reminder are the four nitrogen bases uh, that make up the code of DNA. As it turns out, RNAs uh, don't have thymine. Um, they have a very similar chemical. Um, you'll notice that the thymine just has this extra group kind of sticking off of it, and uracil doesn't have that. So I kind of used my cartoon model again. I just made uracil a slightly different shape. It still has the crucial shape to fit adenine. So adenines still pair with uracil in RNA. They don't have thymine, but because it's a slightly different chemical, we give it a slightly different name. So uracil U, although notice that RNAs still have A's, C's, and G's. And then finally, there's a little bit of a difference between the number of strands that make up RNAs and DNAs typically. Um, all of the RNAs we're going to discuss in this course are single-stranded versus the, the characteristic double-stranded DNA. So sort of one strand versus two. As it turns out, we have discovered some other RNAs um, that we're not going to discuss in this course that are double-stranded, so this one's becoming a little bit less true. Um, but again, it kind of works for the major RNAs that we're going to discuss. So we just try to talk about some quick differences between DNA and RNA. And again, you're going to see how that's relevant as we discuss the processes of transcription and translation coming up.